Welcome back to this series of Wellington Project Server Prime training videos. The next three in the section of videos is how do I work with Project Professional, part one, part two and part three. Part one and part two are just getting you familiar with Microsoft Project Professional and how you would go into the template and update it for your project. And then part three is talking about resourcing in Project Professional. So we're going to start off now, we're actually in the Project Center, so we're going to select the column to the left of the row of the project and we're going to go up to the Open button on the Projects ribbon and we're going to open in Microsoft Project Professional for editing. That then opens up the project in Project Professional and that's the best way of opening up, checking out the project in Project Professional. There are other ways but I found that this is the best way to do that. You don't get subsequent problems if you do it this way. Okay, so here is your template for the project type that you set up and you can see in project here, this is for people that are new to project, you can see that the tasks are listed down here, the duration next to them, the start and finish, and it actually has come, this template, with generic resources assigned to the tasks. So for instance, you've got the product designer as assigned to this task here. And what happens then as the project progresses and you know who the named resources are going to be, you can replace those generic resources with named resources. So up at the top here, there are project ribbons and it's very, very well done in Microsoft Project. For the task ribbon, you have everything to do with the tasks and then the resources here, there is a resources ribbon. There's a very good reports ribbon. You can go in and get some reports on the project very, very quickly and easily. There's the project ribbon, a view ribbon to go and change the views and how to uh, manipulate the views and there is a format ribbon. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is the different task types. So you can have a summary task here, and you can see over here on the Gantt chart on the right-hand side that it looks like this line over here. And then you can have the subtasks are called normal tasks, and they have this blue bar over here on the right-hand side. And then you can have tasks called milestone tasks. And they are a task that are zero duration and they actually have this little diamond shape in the Gantt chart. So that's the three task types. There's the summary task, there is the normal task, and there are the milestone zero duration tasks. Now obviously when the template comes, it's your starter for 10. It actually comes with the type of task that you would use in a project of the type you've selected. So if you've maybe selected a software, project you would have the different tasks you'd use for that. So you will then come in here and you can go and go and insert tasks. So if you want to insert a task you select the task that you want to insert the task above and the best way to do this is to click on the insert key on your keyboard. And I'm going to put inserted task. Then I can go across and I can go and put the duration next to that task, how long I want the task to be in duration. And you can see that it's actually been put onto the Gantt chart bit on the right hand side. I can then go in and assign a resource, a generic resource to that task. And But we'll talk about resources a little bit later, but I can go and do that if I want to. So that's just going in very, very quickly and easy and inserting tasks, which you probably will have different tasks to what's on the template. You can also come and delete tasks on the template if they're not appropriate for your project. So you just right click on the task and go down and delete the task. So that's going in, inserting and deleting tasks. One thing I'd like to point out to you, do you notice when I deleted that task that some of the fields here have highlighted in blue? That's called change highlighting. That came in a few project versions ago. It's very, very useful because you can actually see instantly the change that you've made to the project duration. You can see if the end of the project is going to move out or move forward depending on the change you've made. It's called change highlighting. It's something that's useful for you to know about. When you're deleting a task, if you delete a summary task, this one here with the subtasks underneath it, it will delete all of the subtasks as well. So that's something to be aware of. Also, I talk about milestone types and I'm talking about them a little bit later and just to be aware, don't delete any tasks that have actually milestone task custom fields against them. But we talk about that a little bit later. 
Now the tasks, when you've planned out your work breakdown structure, the tasks link to each other. So for instance, this identify the launch team, when that task is done over here, that one will be finished and then determine the sales objectives will be the next task. And they're actually linked here with a finish to start. So I finish this task and then I start the next one, a finish to start relationship. You can see a little arrow over here on the Gantt chart. If I double click on that arrow, I can see that I identify the launch team and then I determine the sales objectives. So I finish uh, the first task and then I start the next task. I can change that relationship if I want to, to start those two tasks at the same time. So a start to start relationship. And you can actually see then that that brings the duration of the project in a little bit because I'm doing those two tasks in parallel. I could also change the relationship there to be a finish to finish relationship. And this is what I set up at the beginning. Again, the template comes with those tasks um, connected to each other, relationships between tasks, but they can be changed. So that's just talking a little bit about the task relationships. The other thing you'll notice is that the template has come with some notes in this indicator column. Now you can go and select any task inside here and go up to the notes icon on the task ribbon and go and add a note. Notes are quite a good thing in the project because then anybody that comes in they can actually go and read your notes and it's just giving them extra information to do with the project. Now anything that you do in project up on the ribbon here up at the top on this quick access toolbar you can see that there is this undo and redo buttons and you can just come down here and you can go along and just undo what you've done. If you've done something you're not happy with, I can undo the note there and then you can go backwards and forwards undoing and redoing. Very, very useful because those of you who know previous versions of Project know that you could only undo the last thing that you did in previous versions and then this multiple undo came in which is very, very useful. Okay, so the other thing very, very useful here is on the view ribbon there is this outline. Now you can actually go and say I want to condense my project to level one. That's very, very useful because then you can actually go and open up a phase that you're working on and then go and deal with just the section you're working on. So that is the outline. That is on the view ribbon, the outline. So you can then come and say show all subtasks or go back to level one. People find this useful because it's an easy way to keep control on the project. They can then see the section they're working on. If I was working on phase three, I could just concentrate on that area. So that's the outline. project comes with lots of different views and those views have tables. Now for instance if you look here on the left hand side you can see that I'm looking at the Gantt chart view at the moment and then also the table that I'm looking at is the entry table. Now as you get more and more used to project you can come along and right click on that view on the left hand side and go and change the view to maybe the tracking Gantt if you're tracking the project you're going updating some task that you've completed you can then go and change the view to the tracking uh, view with the tracking table and all of these views are here just to help you to go and do different functionality that you're working on so it's they're there to help you but you don't have to you can just stay within the Gantt chart view with the entry table at the beginning if you're um, getting used to project all right so what I'm going to do now I'm going to finish with part one so what we've actually done here we've looked at working with project professional part one because there's quite a bit of functionality I want to show you so I hope you'll join me in part two where we'll carry on from where we are here thank you very much <laughs>